Good morning, good morning. We are in the car today. I hope it's not too bright behind me. I tried to put uh, my phone on my dock over here in the center and the sun was just like straight up in the middle of it. It was not going to work. So we're just going to do it like this. Um, I've got a free birthday coffee. They got rid of the white chocolate macadamia cold brew, which is really sad because I really like that one. Um, but I went with the cinnamon dolce cold brew, I think it's called, something like that. Um, it's really good. Cheers. Um, but we are here to talk about my month of reading. Um, this book or this video is going up on my birthday. So happy birthday to me. I will have a little mini birthday vlog up on Monday, but it's not going to be that much because I literally just got back from a massive, massive, crazy trip. So that we're going to keep it low key for the birthday. We're going to go hang out with friends on my birthday. And then on Sunday, we're going to go see Princess Mononoke with my teenager. She's never seen it. It's one of my favorite movies. She doesn't like doing things with me that much typically. So for her gift, she's going to actually go to the movies with me. We thought about doing Barbie. I think we might still be on the fence about what movie we're going to go see. But I love Princess Mononoke. It's my birthday. I think we're going to go see Princess Mononoke. Um... So yeah, we're going to go to the movies. I digress. On Sunday for my birthday and y'all will get a little mini vlog on Monday. So that's awesome. Um but today we are here to talk about my July book reviews. Um I read 11. I'm going to recount it cuz I'm going to insert my little graph here and I it got a little blurry while I was on the cruise because I was reading four or five books while I was on the cruise. And, um, yeah, we're going to talk about all of the books that I read. So let me insert the graph here. And there you are, 11 books this month. So let's start with the books that I read before my trip. I believe the first book I read this month was The Crown of Gilded Bones. Yeah. Uh, the Jennifer Armand Trout. It's book three of the From Blood and Ash series. I will let you know. This was not my favorite of the books. I think so far book two has been my favorite in this series. I need to read book four and then read the newest one that just came out, book five. So, um, I'm looking forward to that. I am going to read book four, um... But right this second, I didn't absolutely love Crown of Gilded Bones. A book I did love, though, was the next book I read, which was Divine Arrivals. And oh my goodness, I loved, loved this book. It was my one of my favorite reads of the month. When I saw it was on Kindle Unlimited, I texted just about everybody I knew and was like, that book that everybody's talking about on TikTok, it's on Kindle Unlimited. Go forth and read it. And I did. And it was fantastic. One of my favorite reads of the month. This coffee is hitting. I've not had Starbucks. Because um, they have Starbucks in the UK, but Costa and a few other things are way more common. So I haven't had a good cold brew Starbucks in a hot minute. So please excuse me while I sip it. Okay, so we read Divine Rivals. We also read Ward D, which is Freedom McFadden. Freedom McFadden's always on Kindle Unlimited, and she's an automatic read for me. If she puts out a new book, I'm reading it because I absolutely adore her thrillers and it did not let me down. Ward D was amazing. Look Closer was also really good. I did a review for this one, I believe, um, on my channel. I love an unreliable narrator and this was an unreliable narrator thriller. It was so stinking good. Really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, unfortunately yours was the Tessa Bailey that I read. Um, I did a review on this one. I also think 
but I liked it better than I liked the first book in this series, Secretly Yours. Unfortunately, yours was better than Secretly Yours, but I'm still chasing that Tessa Bailey high of um, It Happened One Summer and Hook, Line, and Sinker. Those two books are my absolute favorites. Sorry, I thought there was going to be a wreck next to me, but there was not. Um, but yeah, Tessa Bailey's top tier, I think, is Hook, Line, and Sinker and It Happened One Summer. I also really liked my serial killer vacation or whatever it was called. I read that book last year um, around this time when Sophia was having surgery on her arm. And I remember reading it as a distraction and it was really good. So I, I love Tessa Bailey. These Napa Valley Vineyard books have not been my favorite of hers. Um, but that's okay. I, I gave, I still think I gave unfortunately yours like three stars um so are we up to bear and the nightingale let me check no we're not up to bear and the nightingale because i have some things to say about that one but we are up to strange the dreamer which i did do a video on because i absolutely loved strange the dreamer I cannot wait to read Muse of Nightmares. It's actually on hold. I'm hoping at the library. It came in while I was out of town. So I have to go pick it up this morning. I'm hoping it's still there. Um, but I think they hold it for a little while while they wait on you to come get it. But anyways, Muse of Nightmares is book two. Strange the Dreamer was so whimsical and so, so good. Also really loved my next read, which was The Bodyguard. That was like a rom-com but I don't know just also was very warm and fuzzy feeling I don't know I really liked the bodyguard and I loved the fact that the female was the bodyguard and not the male because I've read it so many times with a male bodyguard helping a helpless female but loved the family trauma aspect of it loved the uh, fact that the female was the bodyguard just really, really loved The Bodyguard. It was one of my favorite rom-coms so far this year. Um, just because, like Flat Share, it had a lot of different things going on other than just the love interest. There was trauma and, you know, even some thriller aspects to it. So yeah, I really, really liked The Bodyguard. Now we are up to Bear and the Nightingale. And I got some stuff to say about this one. So it was recommended on TikTok. Somebody said it was one of their favorite reads ever. They, they like yearned for the feeling that they got the first time that they read this book. So I was like, I love cozy. I love whimsical. I really want to read this book. This was one of the roughest books I've ever had to try to get through. I don't know if I was reading it. I will give it credit to the person who recommended this book. Maybe they were reading it in the winter, all snuggled up before a fire with like a Sherpa blanket on. And the mood was perfect for this Russian fairy tale style book. I was reading this book on a seven and a half hour flight from Atlanta to London and then in a hotel room in the summer in Edinburgh while, you know, exhausted at night because I was walking around all day for eight, nine hours, walking miles and miles and miles. And then I would get home and I would lay in the bed and I would read this book, but I kept falling asleep. It was a very whimsical fairy tale type of book. Um, it does take place in like your Russia. I don't remember if she calls it Russia, but it is like the way it might be like a made up land, but it is very Russia feeling. Um, and that's the best way I could describe it. A whimsical Russian fairy tale that is very slow paced. Like this is a slow paced book. If that is your thing, and you just love something so cozy that you just can read and imagine. And, and sometimes I do love that. You guys know that. But you got to know when to read this one. And I just, I think I fucked that up. So I'm not, like, I didn't completely crap on this book. Because 
I think it was a fuck up on my part, partly. I should have read this in front of a fire or in front of a Christmas tree or maybe go visit my mother-in-law and Helen in the mountains and read this. That's where I should have read this, not how I tried to read it. I did finish it. I did not DNF it, though I was tempted many times during this trip because it just... It wasn't capturing my attention in the environment that I was in. So I finished it. I'm happy I finished it. I may <laughs> reread it one day at a later date, a later time in the proper setting. Like if I ever do a girls weekend reading in a cabin somewhere, I might bring this book because that would probably be perfect. But for a plane ride and Airbnb sleeping it was not perfect um next book that I did read though was a Delilah Green doesn't care and that was the perfect vacation read literally perfect vacation read I read two books that were perfect vacation reads and two books that I didn't hate but probably weren't great vacation reads so that's on me um but Del Delilah Green Doesn't Care was one of those perfect vacation reads. It was funny, quick, quick, witty. I read it in a day laying by the pool um, on one of my days at sea on my ship. Literally read it in one day. It was so cute and so good. Also finally read Role Models, which was one of my free reads from Amazon um, a few months ago, I feel like at this point, I'm so far behind on my free reads. Um, first reads, I think they're called. I'm so far, I have so many of those stacked up that I want to read and I'm going to just have to do like a whole month this winter where I'm going to just do a whole month where I'm going to do just first reads reading. Um, because there are some amazing books on there that I really, really freaking want to read, but I just, man, do I get bogged down on my TBR. And it's, it's been worse since I've been using the library more because when library books drop, you have to prioritize them or you'll not get a chance to read them before they're gone. So my libraries, my library reads really fuck with my TBR, unfortunately, um, as I go pick up the Muse of Nightmares <laughs> from the library. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I am so, so excited about how much I loved Wool Models. I bummed that it took me that long to read. Absolutely loved this book. Um, it is about two people in their 50s who kind of meet over a video game, much like a WoW or a Diablo style video game, from what I understand. I've played WoW. Um, I haven't played Diablo. That's just kind of the vibes I got from it. And a lot of people, you know, who use these video games maybe are socially awkward or have a hard time in real life friends. And then there are people who make real life friends no problem who play these games. Well, these pe these two main characters fall in the socially awkward side of things. So they become each other's besties because they're the only people that each other likes and um they fall in love of course and it's a really nice rom-com with family trauma and all of that good stuff in it and I really 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 enjoyed role models in fact I immediately downloaded another book by the author because I am a glutton for punishment and I will just keep downloading books to my TBR with no no stop in sight I have books from Kindle Unlimited that I downloaded last fall that have fall vibes, quote unquote, that I wanted to read that are still not read on my Kindle. So this fall, I get to try again to read them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Red Wall Models. And then the other book that I didn't absolutely love that I read on vacation, and I think it's my fault. I think it's my fault. I like to take the blame when the blame is due. I read Philippa Gregory's Dawnlands. Now, I love Philippa Gregory novels because I am a Tudor Court type of girl. Like, I love that whole period. If you don't know who Philippa Gregory is, a lot of the Showtime shows and HBO shows that are based off of, like, The Spanish Princess, The Tudors, like, shows like that are based off of her books loosely. The Other Boleyn Girl was a um, Philippa Gregory novel, I believe. So, yeah, um... A lot of this stuff is based off of her, her work. So 
I usually really, really love her because I like that kind of stuff. But once again, it was a little slow paced, you know, because it's court drama and political stuff going on. And I just needed to stick to rom-coms on vacation. Because they're just easier to read for me on vacation. But I thought, well, in the UK, read a UK author. Read a um, UK set book. It just, it, it was too slow. I did finish it. It was good. Um, it was a three star just strictly because it was probably my fault for reading it in the wrong environment. So that's everything that I read in the month of July. 11 books. Um, I read some that I really, really loved. I like really, really loved. It was like the month of rom-coms for me. Um, and then some that I didn't love, but once again, may have been. I'll give the two that I didn't love, which was Dawnlands and um, Bear in the Nightingale, the credit of It May Have Been Me. It may have been when I was trying to read it and it wasn't the right mental environment. Crown of Gilded Bones that I didn't love. I'm just going to say that wasn't great because I was, I have no excuse. I wasn't on vacation. I love the series. I love the characters. That just wasn't great for me. Um, the fact that I had two five stars in book one and book two, and then this was like a three star really disappoints me. And I'm hoping book four is better, but yeah. I love you guys so, so, so much. Thanks for caring what I read in the month of July. Thanks for liking, subscribing. Gained a few subscribers while I was on vacation. That was so exciting to see when I got back. Um, thank you for sticking it out with me while I was on vacation. You got about a week of no videos because I did have some, you know, stocked up for you while I was gone. But yeah, thanks for sticking around and caring what I think of books. I love you all so, so much. And Monday you will have a little birthday vlog.